When starting her family, Sabina Patterson initially faced problems with infertility, but through IVF, she was able to become a mother to twins. In her late 40s, she longed to have another child. Doctors said her tubes were damaged and needed surgery to have them removed. But the night before the operation, her husband Jermaine said a few words that would change her story. My husband had a revelation. We prayed at 11.15 p.m. So 12 midnight, he jumped out from the bed. And I said, what, what's happening? He said, God said, you're pregnant. Um, he give you a son named Judah Emmanuel. And when I get to the hospital, I let the doctors know that God said I'm pregnant. At the hospital, Sabina's pregnancy test results were positive, but doctors determined it was a false pregnancy. They saw a development on her fallopian tube and urged her to proceed with surgery to remove it. But Sabina remained confident in God's promise and refused the operation. I'm speaking to them. I said, you know, I'm pregnant and it's a baby. And they said, no, it's not a baby. So they want me to understand that it's not a baby, but I keep on refusing to say that word because people was doubting God. They make it seem that I'm crazy. God can use the foolish thing to come find the wise. So I tell God to prove yourself to them. So that was our prayer. Sabina couldn't find a medical professional who would agree to prenatal care. So at eight weeks, she went to a Christian clinic where she could have a sonogram. They find a fetus and fetus heart rate 158. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And Judah raised his hand in my stomach. So the doctors also captured it. And they said, the baby hands is up. And they said, congratulations, you're pregnant. It was determined that she had an ectopic pregnancy. The fetus was developing on her left fallopian tube and her uterus was filled with fibroid tumors. Her condition posed serious risk to her child's life and her own, but the clinic was not equipped to treat her. At another office, she sought pro-life doctor John Burchalski for care. The baby couldn't get through the tube and it was behind the uterus. And so we said, you need, you need to go to the emergency room so we can take care of the condition you're in, which will happen to hurt and kill the baby. And um, she, at that moment, uh, her eyes lit up and she's like, no, Johnny, um, the Lord has told me that I'm gonna be healed and that everything will be okay. She sought several other medical opinions, but the doctor's response was always the same. Abort the pregnancy or she could die. At home, the couple held on to God's promise. And I said, no, I'm not gonna kill the baby because it's a promise from God and I'm not gonna kill it. Six months into her pregnancy, her water broke and she was finally admitted to Johns Hopkins Hospital. Her placenta had invaded her liver and kidneys. Doctors said the baby could be delivered premature but Sabina wasn't expected to survive. Sabina checked into the hospital and was scheduled to deliver in one month. I knew that I couldn't allow the doubt to set in, but I knew that I had to keep praying, keep, keep pushing, because I know God can do anything. On November 17, 2017, family and church members were prayerful as Sabina entered surgery. Two hours later, she gave birth to a baby boy, Judah, Sabina made a full recovery. We both, you know, we cried and the mostly, we also said it's our crying was thanking God. Just we danced in the hospitals. We danced until we can't dance anymore because it's like, yes. Meanwhile, Judah was treated in the neonatal intensive care unit. When he was in the incubator, he raised his hand and I said, thank you, Jesus, we made it. After three months in the NICU, Judah came home with his parents. 12 midnight. A day before Judah you know, was supposed to be released, Judah himself disconnected the tubes. He pulled it out from his nose. He came home with no oxygen, no tubes. And since then, he hasn't returned back to the hospital. Every day I look at him, he's, he's a miracle, a miracle child. He's coming to do great things. At the heart, it's the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ, the love of Sabina for Judah. And then thirdly, the expertise of the docs at Hopkins. And uh, for that, um, thank you, Jesus. Today, Sabina and Jermaine say their family is complete and they're thankful for a special promise that brought them Judah. Always have faith. If God said it, believe it. Um, 
and just, just have confidence in him, no matter what the situation looks like. It is miracle, and I believe that he's here for a reason. Always have faith. If God said it, then believe it. For Jermaine, that faith came in the middle of the night with a dream where he knew supernaturally that Sabina was pregnant and received, this is going to be the name of your baby boy. He is going to be called Judah Emmanuel. Well, that gives you faith when you wake up with that. It gives you faith to realize well, let's hold on to the promise of God. Let's not give up. Let us know and be fully persuaded that he who has promised is able. Now, ask yourself this question. If you were in that couple's position and you knew that Sabina could die, this is a life-threatening condition, you know that, which choice do you make? Which way do you go? Which report do you believe? Well, I thank God that they believed the report of the Lord. He gave them that promise. He visited them and let them know what was getting ready to happen. And it happened as he promised. Isn't it wonderful? He orchestrated everything so that that little wonderful boy could be born. And let's all expect great things from Judah Emmanuel. He is going to be mighty in the Lord because God called him by name before he was even formed in his mother's womb. What a great report. Well, here's another good report for you. It's from YouTube. Veronica writes in, in 2010, my husband had three major strokes. Doctors told me I would have to put him in a home since he wasn't able to walk wasn't able to swallow or feed himself. He also lost his peripheral vision, and there were dark spots where he couldn't see, but we believe for healing. But then the first six months, he learned to walk. Then he started driving. After be being prayed over at church, he regained 80% of his wow. sight, and I still believe God will restore him to 100%. Thank you, Jesus. Now that is a miracle. Boy, that is an incredible report. Well, here's another good report. This came in from Instagram. Desma says, doctors said I needed to undergo surgery for a heart problem, but instead God healed me. I don't have to undergo the surgery and I am so grateful to him. I'm sure you are, Desma. <laughs> yeah. That's Let me awesome. ask you another question. How big is your possible? Does your possible limit God? When you start saying, this is impossible, this can never happen, I have to face reality, all of these things. Realize with God, all things are possible. In the kingdom of heaven, there's no one sick. There's no one depressed. There was no one in need. Let his kingdom invade you right now. Let his kingdom come. His will be done in your body. Let's pray. Lord, I pray over everyone watching us right now, and I ask that the kingdom of heaven would come near to them. It would come into their heart, into their midst, into their very being, and that with you, we declare over them, with you, all things are possible. So stretch forth your hand to heal their disease now in Jesus' name. There's someone you heard that report about a heart uh, being healed and your heart needs healing. God is literally reaching into your heart, remaking it. It's going to pump normally, get your oxygen levels checked. Everything concerning your heart is now normal. There's someone else, you're in a hospital. I don't even think you can hear me, but there are people around your bed praying for you. You have sepsis. God is going to take that infection out of your body right now. You're going to be healed. You will rise and walk from that hospital. Terry? There's somebody with an ongoing chronic skin issue. It's like, like prickly skin all over your body. God's healing that condition for you. Your nerve endings are being healed. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family 
and God bless you.